Hello Tubesters, it's Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, this one is, as you will have seen by the title, a tutorial on these little guys. Uh, 10mm uh, Pendragon American Civil War and these are Confederates. Uh, I chose Confederates uh, because they have a mix of, of dress compared to the Union. Yeah, I know the Union had obviously slight differences but for painting purposes at the moment um, they uh, they have obviously slight differences. Now, I've already done, uh, I don't know how many to be honest with you, I think there's 25 in this unit. This was a, a uh, part of a, it's like one of those um, ready-made armies. Uh, Paul Alba was kind enough to gift them to me last year. I think it was last year, Paul. Uh, and of course, nothing's got done with them ever since because I always said I wouldn't uh, do anything until all my League of Augsburg project was done. But a couple of the guys had said to me, uh, would I uh, do some 10 mils? And uh, as I do paint 10 mils, I thought that'd be a good idea. I wanted to show really how you have to change your mindset slightly, not just because of the size, but just how you paint. The only thing I haven't done on these that I've, I'd forgotten to do uh, as I finished them off last night was uh, I just need to put an extra highlight on the wood on the muskets. I put a, a like a brighter orangey, orangey uh, spots as you'd see on my ABs. I do the same with these guys. So that's the only thing missing with these. Now, when you're putting these down on your lolly sticks. I normally do about six at a time. Let's get these in the shot so you can actually have something to look at. I normally do six at a time. If you're doing, say, my League of Augsburg, they're all going to be the same uniform. So I will split them into poses. Uh, it's just easier because you can go, uh, you know, along your lolly stick, and uh, you know it's it's a lot easier to do that way. Um, I always put the faces to the front. Of course, my phone has to beep off as I'm. Uh, as I'm doing the video. The faces I was like obviously putting at the front again it's just easier than having them all mixed all the way you know some front some back you know because you you're constantly throwing off your, your painting production line. Uh, but in the case of these rebs here I obviously want to do a, a huge variety of different uh, uniforms just to make them have that ad hoc, ad hoc look that the uh, the Confederates often had, especially in the mid to late part of the war. Uh, there's, I believe, I say about 25 in this group. Paul had already gone through the bags as he as he often does, and, and had already sorted them out into, you know, regiments that he he'd wanted at the time. And I've just pulled those out. So these aren't for any particular rule set. They are um, they are what they are. You know, I've just pulled them out to to give a tutorial on the 10 mils. I will do some others on the League of Augsburg and if anybody, you know, if I've got anything in. I've got a couple of Napoleonics but not many. I just bought some as a as a trial but I do believe I've got a couple of um, Peninsula Napoleonics knocking around. I just thought these guys for the different uh, types of uniforms, you know, they'd be good as a tutorial. And as usual they're mounted on ice lolly sticks uh, and they're stuck down with uh, PVA white glue. Uh, I think the white glue is fairly decent. It tends to lift off fairly easy when you come to break them off. Not always. You've got to be a bit careful. Uh, be careful if you're using a scalpel to lift them off because you can sometimes obviously break the scalpel blade or slash your fingers. Uh, a, a good little tool to do is one of these small, um, either carburetor adjusting uh, one of these, you know, these really small uh, carburetor screwdrivers or some such screwdriver that's really small. Um, where are we? There's something to look at, even if it is far away. Let's get this down a bit. Um, we're going to go just putting, as usual, I like to put my flesh on first just to give it a see where we are with the As I said to you before, it's more the hands than anything, to be honest. Uh, I like to I like to put my uh, just a base coat of flesh on. Uh, the base coat I'm using is the light brown which you've seen on other videos. Uh, it's At the moment it's my go-to but just like you guys I change like the weather. Um, 
<laughs> and as usual with Gav's ad hoc videos, if you give the truck the chair rolling around and the long distance voice, and I've run out of paper towel. Or I more more or less believe my wife has actually nicked my paper towel for some other for some other reason. But here we go. Let's just get ourselves sorted. These really are ad hoc videos. I've spent three days, um, well, three days. You know, the, at the end of the evening uh, when I've been doing my commission work, you know, just doing these uh, these Confederates, so that they uh, they're ready for for this uh, tutorial. But I've done when it's actually come to film the tutorial, I've done absolutely no planning whatsoever. And they look a bit bigger when they're at this scale, don't they? Or I should say, on the uh, now you've got to be a bit careful on the using the lolly sticks because your fingers will scuff the uh, the figures. So although I've got my fingers touching this at the moment, I will need to back off a bit. Uh, the primer I'm using is the Vallejo um, US Navy Ghost Grey again which is what I say I touch up with the figures for after I spray them with carb auto primer. I do find this one time when I'm not that fussed about using auto primer, um, where are we? This is going to be a, a lesson in itself how to do 10 mils under a camera. Uh, I, I tend not to use them for this, uh, this type of work. Right, we're going to have to do something here because the camera is picking up, is wanting to pick up the, the background rather than the, the, uh, let's see if it's a bit of plastic card down or will it make our, sometimes it, it mucks up the light. No, oh, that's working for us. Sorry about that guys, as I say, I'm, I'm not, you know, I know this is what three tutorials in and maybe I should know better, but I don't. Now I'm sorry about any um, ambient noise. Uh, it's obviously quite hot in the UK, not compared to a lot of countries I understand, but to the UK, um, when we get into the mid 30s, uh, we think we're living in the Sahara. And the camera definitely doesn't want to play game. Ball today, I don't know why, because it's normally a loyal little camera. I do use a video camera rather than uh, than a phone or a, or an iPad. I say there's a there's an assortment here. We've got guys in uh, well, I believe they're called frock coats. We've got some KPs, um, the little faces. Obviously, in a in a in a time when Everybody was going around with a beard, much like in the last couple of years. In, um, there doesn't seem to be any beard sculpted on. I think that's being a bit pedantic on my side, though, for uh, such little figures. Uh, I, I didn't, obviously, apart from seeing on their website, I hadn't seen these figures before. Um, before I've got my paintbrush on them, uh, what do I think of them? Yeah, they seem fine. Um, they're not too small, you know. I, Paul had also got some other, a few other makes in the the box as well, and they're teeny tiny. Um, and of course, all the kids decide to go screaming and shouting. Um, I think what I'll do is once I've done these flesh. It's going to kill me, <laughs> my poor dog. But we're uh, we'll shut the window because these particular kids are particularly noisy. In fact, I should go over and shut the window now. <laughs> Thank you, kids, very much. Uh, there's nothing I like to be shut inside <laughs> with the window shut in thirty odd degrees of heat centigrade. I should say, whatever, whatever. Come on, getting part. I don't know why it's. Uh... I'll drop back on the. 
just to see if it's going to make any difference. I don't think it will. Oh, it might do. There you go. Learn something every day. Yeah, I uh, I shoot these with a uh, a Sony camera, which I no, so it sounds not even a Sony. It's a Panasonic Panasonic camera. Uh, only a hundred quid. One bought in the sale at uh, one of these super stores. Um, you know, it's not one of the fancy eight hundred thousand pound ones that a lot of these big YouTubers use. Um, um, but it do the job for me. You never know when I reach uh, YouTube stardom at the uh, the age of about eighty five. I might get a, a decent camera. What we do is go through all the front bits of the uh, the flesh first, and obviously turn the figures round, and just get any hands that are sticking out backwards, as they're in a is it right shoulder shift. Pose. I thought these could be one of Rhodes's brigades at uh, Gettysburg when he goes up at Oak Ridge. One of the North Carolina brigades. Well, I'm painting a regiment here, but you know what it's like. I've, <laughs> I've already cleaned up a second unit. <laughs> I thought, well, you know, I might as well do it. I pulled three units out to see what I wanted and uh, <laughs> left them out. And I thought, well, I've got a spare five minutes. We might as well be productive and, and clean this other unit off. Because you often don't see, um, because of the bit of debacle with uh, O'Neill and Iverson's brigades, um, they're often left out everybody always goes for one of the Texan units or something going up Colts Hill um, and at the end of the day Rhodes's division got uh, yes was, was mishandled but uh, they did uh, they lost some heavy 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 casualties so I thought why not represent them as a uh, one of the North Carolina Brigades and we'll do one of the Georgia Brigades and the Alabama Brigades sometime right that's off our main flesh now when I do flesh on these guys there are only uh, two um, that's this base and one highlight of a, of a fairly bright colour if you don't like this brown uh, you can get the Vallejo Panzer Aces uh, shadow flesh you know which obviously is that really dark reddy brown you could do that um, but uh, I still I've found that this works, uh, in my opinion, uh, the same as it does on a lot of the larger scale figures. So that's fine for me. Uh, what we are going to need now is I've got two of those, as you saw in the already the pre-painted ones. I've got two of those really light grey, uh, light grey, light blue trousers that they've taken off obviously Union Dead or Union Prisoners, whatever, or Union Stores. Um, but obviously the Union also had that more faded blue. Again, you know, caveat on this, you know, I'm not, I, I like the American Civil War. Um, I think it's a good thing to study. I like the, the military and the polit politics side of it, uh, as in the politics then, not now so much. Uh, but um, I, uh, you know, when it comes down to uniforms, I am not uh, some expert on the American Civil War, so um, you know, take out of this what you want. Again, it was more of a case of, well, these are a, a mix of. Oh, that's going to be too. I think that's going to be too light. If you could even see it. We'll see. 
it might darken up. As I said to you guys, don't panic at your first brush strokes thinking, oh, it's way too light. Don't forget, often your paint will, will dry out a darker colour. So don't panic straight away, just give it a few minutes to, to dry off. And if it is slightly light like this, rather than paint the whole the whole trousers over again with you know a darker colour, all you need to do is just put your your darker, you know, your shaded areas in afterwards. There's nothing when you paint that says you know you should go from dark to light. You know, it's uh, having painted larger figures, it's uh, sometimes I'll put my highlights in first and then go and put the, the shadow areas in, you know. Uh, then put shadows here in and then obviously put any colours in between but that, that obviously gets blended in and and, and things. Uh, this um, is actually drying quite well. That's not too bad. That's just to give us an extra colour. Now what we want is a predominant colour of grey because it is a confederate unit. Now, as we all know, there are 10,000 types of greys, just like there are blacks, greens, reds, and all the rest of it. Uh, we are dealing with here at 10 mil, an artificial look, if that makes sense. Obviously, you saw those I painted earlier. There's no way do these, those colors that I've put on really, you know, show off a, a proper, a colour that you'd expect to see on a 28mm figure. I mean, you saw that Zouave I did. Um, that, you know, that I, I like the I like the more subtle dark colours. If I'm saying to say that blue, um, but at 10mm, you really have to obviously lift them out from the from the your table. So you have to do, um, you know, artificially different colours. Now, this is where I'm trying to say to you: don't feel like um, you know I'm not saying you have to go out and obviously if you've never done 10 mils before you know saying I'll go out and get a starter army or something but uh, get yourself some samples if you can from one of the companies or if you're you know at one of the shows at the bring and buys you know there's always bits going around even if you've got to you know repaint them um, even if you know and if you don't want to strip them even if you're just going to spray them over with a Spray them over with a, a primer again to you know start off. Um, now, unlike the ones I did on the other lollipop sticks, these ones I've decided to go a bit darker because these will be all mixed in with those others. They've, you know they're not on a particular base yet. Um, uh, just to represent the different colours that are in there. Uh, you, I mean, obviously they had a lot of button up. It wasn't all grey, as we all know, but uh, you want to still have a predominant colour. It's like when you're doing Napoleonic, say, you know, in a larger, you know, 18, 15 mil, 28 mil. I always like to give the predominant um, Chaco colours, say, in black. If you've got if you've got French that have got uh, Chaco covers on them. You know, you don't want a, a unit that's, you still need to tie that in as a unit so it's not too ragtag. So in this one, we're going to have a couple of figures that will be all in grey. Because we have a lot of the other figures that are already in butternut. I often like going to the uh, reenacting uh, um, you know the different reenacting pages, and or just putting, you know, obviously seeing them up on the net as photographs, and it's surprising, you know, they've got uh, rebels in, in dark, um, you know, black trousers. You know, uh, you'll be surprised. Uh, this guy's going to have a, a jacket of butternuts, and he's just going to have grey trousers. I think there must be a Tyrannosaurus Rex or something loose in somebody's garden because of where those kids are screaming.
Now you can go for a really dark base. Now these, I just want these to be a different grey than the, the other, the other uh, ones I've already painted in the unit. But if you just wanted to use one one grey, you know, you could go for a very dark base here, which is when you put your really lighter highlights on. Obviously, it'll make them pop even more. Um, and again, you can have your own way of doing it. You can have one stick that of all, you know, because I want to make these such a hodgepodge and I'm a bit of a, a masochist when it comes to not bothering uh, to think out the painting process that much. Um, you could obviously have one one of the ice lolly sticks with, you know, um, right shoulder, shoulder shift all in butternut and then the other one all in grey just to make things easy for yourself. Whereas I'm obviously going... Uh, as we would say in our local uh, local saying, going around the Reekin. The Reekin being a very large hill in Shropshire. And if you need to, if it's taking your time on something, if you don't, you know, if it's uh, if something's a problem, you are going around the Reekin because it takes a while to get round it. There you go. You learn something new every day, even when it's not painting. Um, right. So that's our dark grey trousers. As I say, I'm doing this again with the camera, as I said on the other videos, the camera slightly um, knocks out the the light slightly. And the lighting is something I've got to sort out. Do this frock coat in the dark as well, because this guy's going to have um, button-up. Trousers on. I'm using a triple zero brush here. Uh, it's well worn. It's um, it's a Windsor and Newton actually. It's uh, I've been far too rough with it. I did. Well, I normally keep my Windsor and Newtons back for doing the large scale figures. Um, but as I said on another video, on a shortage of brushes, I ended up pressing this into service because I've got a couple of Windsor and Newton spares, but. I think I'll go back to just using my army painters or whatever because um, I've killed this brush off and it's not cheap. And that's using brush soap with it. Uh, But I really like the look of, you know, when you get inspired. Um, and of course, I, I've i always um, been sub to the uh, Gettysburg National Park Service and a couple of the other National Park Services. Um, there's, a, there's a guy who's got a channel, if you want to check it out, he's called Stuff Writer. So, Stuff Writer. Um, and I'm not sure if, there's a well-known uh, park uh, ranger or Matt Atkinson, and uh, he's a he's fantastic because he's got that human touch when it comes to teaching people history. And uh, I'm not sure if Stuff Right is actually connected to him family-wise. What I'm not sure, but uh, he seems to shoot a lot. The National Park Service doesn't seem to be shooting any or putting any videos up these days, which is a real shame. Because for all of us that can't get to Gettysburg, you know, it's the best chance we've got. And uh, Anyway, Stuff Writers goes out there filming Matt's um, and some of the other Rangers uh, tours. So if you go onto Stuff Writers channel, he's got some lovely hour and two hour uh, videos on uh, you know around the Gettysburg Park with the different different uh, Rangers. Uh, another guy who I'm sub to Tony Willoughby, I believe. Uh, another battle site that I'm, I'm really interested in, Shiloh. Uh, he he does a lot of stuff around Shiloh and I believe Chattanooga as well. Sorry if you hear me slurping in the background. Just trying to keep the fluids up. Nothing like drinking nice hot tea. Hot, a nice hot day. I'm supposed to cool you down now. Uh, that's our base dark greys. And it, that, by the way, sorry, I should have said, um, was actually field. Where are we? Field Blue from Vallejo. Um, I use it a lot for, for either as a highlight to grey or as, a, as actual in this case as a, as a base for grey. 
Uh, some of those other figures have got some of the uh, lighter feel blue on as well as a highlight. Right, so we said we go button up now with these guys. Now, on those other figures I was using for button up just whatever I happen to have in my uh, in my palette at the or on my palette at the time. I think as a base. Do we or do we go for that darker one? Actually, no. I was going to, I was going to use a lighter colour, but we're going to go darker. We're going to do some another favourite colour of mine, uh, US Field Drab. This is great for doing as a base for if you're doing metallics. I always put a apart from on ten mils. I always put a um, a base down. So if it's uh, metallic uh, silver or white metallics, um, as I call them, I would put down uh, some form of grey and if it's a brass stroke bronze, I put some form of brown down, and uh, field drab is brilliant for that. It's uh, it's nice backing for your uh, your brass colours. Right, I'm going to go up the brush size, I believe. To I think this one's a zero I've got. Here we go. Um, we'll start with this guy's trousers as we were on him. That'll give us a slightly, slightly darker look. Let's hang a fire a second while I hold this between my teeth and do. Uh, of course, I go to a smaller brush. And I can't get up between his jacket, but there we go. So we give this a, a darker brown, I think. Good thing we're doing the uh, the mono strip is usually they'll you know you'll get to your 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 final one and you're ready to start. You go back and do the highlights of the next colours. What I'm hoping to do is before I put this up to you guys, you'll see it. Um, you'll see it based. But I would say to to, to all of you, don't. I, I know people. I mean, I remember picking these pen dragons up at the shows and just going, you know, oh my life, there is no way I'm going to be able to paint those. But it really is surprising. Um, yes, I'm wearing reading glasses, so probably helps. You don't need to be putting them under a, well I don't think anyway, putting them under a magnifying or a glass of any description. Um, you'll be surprised once you get up close and personal to them. The, the details are fairly easy to pick out, especially on these slightly larger figures. I believe the Callistra figures are slightly bigger still. I have got some Great Wolf Callistra figures as well, which uh, I was originally going to start out when I first got back into, when I actually thought rather than just paint, I'd, I'd actually war game. I saw them being war gamed, and I thought, yeah, I've got an issue. Sure, look like the rest of us. I came away from the show with about forty quid's worth of starter army, thirty quid. Oh, I don't know, whatever it was, but. I've always liked to study the uh, British Expeditionary Force in 1914 and uh, in the Dardanelles in 1915. But what I've always liked about the American Civil War is it's um, it's when you go back to Napoleonic times. Yes, you can see old guys that have, whether they're officers or private soldiers, whatever, that had served in the Napoleon times, but, you know, and then they took the photographs when photograph started coming in, but these 
these guys, you know, they're um, I mean, like the Crimea was also fought, and and you obviously get a, the Indian Mutiny is also was also photographed. But I just think this this was for me one of the the real big firsts where you know you 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 saw armies encamped, you saw the 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 aftermath, or be, and I don't mean the bodies so much, which I always think is a bit gruesome folk photographing people that have fallen. But um, I mean the you know the wrecked houses that have had shots go through them and. And and just even just people standing by as an, as an army walks past, I've always it's always grabbed my enthusiasm. I must admit, I actually fall in the uh, the Union camp um, rather than the, the Confederate camp, and that's nothing. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to invoke any political controversies or anything there. This is just. I was always, uh, I was just always a fan of the uh, since a kid. I think I watched Johnny Shiloh as a kid. <laughs> that, uh, you know that Disney film, and uh, and that put me on the side of the Union as a Britisher. <laughs> so, and I've always, you know, me, I've, I like my naval stuff as well. And I've always got books on. Uh, On the naval aspect of it, you know whether it's the deep water navy or the, uh, the brown water navy. And I've always liked the I've always liked the west as well, not the far west so much, but the the you know just all the you know like like Shiloh and that. I just think the 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 working along with the uh, with the boats along the the rivers, and then obviously. Uh, the fighting in the West just always took my uh, my fancy, but I've got into Gettysburg over the last few years because they do such excellent videos. Um, and for somebody like myself who who can't get about, it's uh, it's my chance to see, you know, up close and personal. About yeah, obviously battlefields change immensely, but um, you're still there. You know, it's still. You can see the sides facing off against each other in your mind's eye. So this, the American Civil War has always had a, a deep interest for me. So I'm just, as I'm talking, I'm just debating if I lighten up on those other jackets, but I don't think I will because I've got other colours in those others on the lolly sticks already. Sorry guys, I'm gonna keep I mean I drift in and out of shot on the 28s, but this is it's trying to find show you the one I'm actually painting. It's more of a fact I, I wanted to do these ones. I, I think the next time I do these I'll just do one figure. Um it just seemed a bit uh, a bit silly not doing the entire entire unit. I thought as 10 mils that you'd see the you'd see the look on them more as part of a unit rather than just one single tiny figure. Majority, apart from obviously, we've got one figure here uh, with that's got the um, got the backpack. But I've got um, I've got a book. I, I think it's called Lee's Army, and it it goes through the the recruiting process, the training process, and things like that for the uh, Army in Northern Virginia. And uh, there's a blur. It's quite a famous photograph. It's in a lot of people's books, but. Uh, and I can't even remember where it's taken now, but that they're all they're they're in the street, and the, the the photographer's got a. I mean, to think of the old big cameras of the day, he must have been out on some balcony or whatever, looking down at some Confederate unit that had uh, stopped in the in the street. And the author was saying, obviously, you can see the amount of uh, rolled up blankets rather than rather than backpacks. Obviously, the guys would. Uh, would keep all their positions ro positions possessions rolled up in the blankets and they were just a lot easier to 
to cart around and uh, because they were civilian blankets a lot of them they you know they would look uh, you know they'd have different patterns on them and things just having a look well, that's our base coats done I think apart from our man here we nearly got away And what I've tried to replicate with just dots, dots, uh, dot, I can't get my words out today. Uh, dots, dashes, <laughs> little squares, triangles, whatever you like. Um, I've tried to replicate that on the on the the, bed, the blanket rolls of these guys. Uh, I do them brighter than obviously they wouldn't be bright white uh, a lot of the time. Well, most of the time, once you've had a more than a couple of hours in the field and. Uh, rubbing over the, the jackets and stuff but again it's all just to make them stand out in the crowd a bit when they're on the tabletop right so we've got base trousers, base jackets we'll now go on to the, we've done the one guy's capi because we have, we're using the same grey and on both occasions I've used actually all just had the right amount of paint there for a change. I've actually used it all up, which is good because I'm normally uh, a right waste of paint, even with a a wet palette, I tend to over well it's not so much you know what it's like. I, I, you know how you guys in the in the warmer countries uh, get by. But here it's gotta be the heat. Every summer, you know, with these uh, Vallejo bottles you you, tr you try to put a tiny bit on your, your palette and the next thing you know you've got a pool of paint. Right, now we're gonna we need some lighter colours for the hats. Now just bear with me a second, guys. Because although we're doing these butternuts, and we need some brown as well. We use brown leather, I think. I'll put some bottles back at the same time because I end up with a thousand on my table otherwise. And they all go down like a like a Trailer dominoes. I have a nasty feeling this bloody camera's moving again. Look at my French. Any of my French friends out there? I do. I know that wasn't French. <laughs> it's just another British saying. <laughs> This is a bit light actually, could have probably done with a darker colour for a hat but we'll go with it anyway now it's on the palette. Right, uh, this guy. I think we'll have a couple of black hats as well. I didn't think there'd be that many black hats but when I was uh, looking at uh, a few photographs and reenactors there was a fair few black civilian hats rather than I thought there'd be more browns and you know straw hats and things I suppose straw hats don't last particularly long in the field Do everything you know everything black would be you know from the cartridge boxes to the boots but I just want the hats on first again because we're going to be lightening up these jackets on the butternuts as you saw with the other ones quite severely I don't always want a bright hat you'll notice a lot of the just to show like different you know contrasting colors you know I You'll notice that a lot of the black hats, or the light hats, I should say, are on grey jackets, and a lot of the darker hats are on these uh, these butternuts because they are going to be lightened up a heck of a lot. I've not bothered doing hat bands or anything with these. Um, I did do them on my league. The League of Augsburg sculpt seems slightly larger. I might be wrong. Um, 
they seem very slightly larger uh, and you can get away with it but uh, I wasn't going to faff around doing hat bands and stuff with these guys As I say, it's not a, it's not too too an exacting process painting ten mils. Again, I don't go down the dipping route. Uh, as you as you know, I'm not a, a massive fan of of that style of painting, and that's again not having a pop at anybody. It's just as I say, it's my my personal choice. Um, but I do find, as I've always said, I think it especially when it's used heavy handedly it can muddy up a figure quite a lot uh, I do believe it'll uh, it'll really muddy up 10 mil figures so it, I don't put any the only the only ink I use the only ink I actually use is just in I've put my, uh, you'll get see again my League of Augsburg figures. I paint uh, just using grey paint for the metallics, uh, and you know brown or yellowy brown for for showing brass and things like that. I went for the first because I've never done these before. Uh, I went with metallics and it seems to work all right. But I did put a, a fair bit of ink in, black ink in, just to dull down the this you know the the extra bright effect on them. I think we are going to need, let's see, we're going to need another hat colour. It's just what colour? <laughs> let's think, Gav, come on. Uh, we've got a dark brown, we've got a okay, umber. It's a bit on the thick side actually. Let's just see if we can reconstitute it with a bit of water. Even the, when it gets to these temperatures, even the uh, wet palette struggles. Might just get away with this. Yeah, that's a bit better. Try not to get any on the on the face, if possible. Um, but we have got our base our base colours of flesh. If we need to go back and clean it up a bit, I'm hoping to shoot another tutorial. Um, hopefully, or started at least um, on the Napoleonic drummer. Hoping to start him on Friday. It might be a case of uh, it's done and dusted and all ready to put up on Friday or Saturday, or it could be a case you don't see it until the following week. Um, I'm just debating whether I speed that one up or not. I won't, I'm not going to speed this one up. Um, but uh, as I say, it's not so much the it's not so much the, the time take because you know you've still got to paint the figure, so it, it's not so much the the time painting them. It's just the it's just uploading everything and then for I have no idea why but when this camera uploads onto my computer it'll often move the where I've stopped obviously stop the camera it'll it'll put all those different frames up higgledy piggledy and uh, if I'm not careful I end up uploading you know things out of sequence and uh, you know, it's a pain in the bum. You know, when you've you've worked so hard trying to get a you know a tutorial up, and it all ends up like that. You, that's when you do think, oh, you know, I can't be bothered. Um, so while we're here, we can use some of these lighter colours for if it would actually show up. I think I've got water on the ferrule. Let's try that. 
try again. On these water canteens, as I said before, you could have metal ones with just shining through, literally metal. Um, and you could have uh, cloth coloured ones, obviously trying to keep the water cooler. And they'd often be like blues and greys and, and uh, brown colours. Uh, obviously then just the raw metal or just uh, wooden ones as well. Um, again though, when we're doing canteens, because that's what these little round things are, <laughs> uh, you try, if you've got like say a sky blue one there, you try and put like a brown coloured water canteen cover. Uh, just to also make it stand out more as we do the highlights. I'm not sure if I've done that one or not, so I'll give you my brown one. Right, I do believe that's a uh, That's our guys uh, mainly based. I think now we're going to go with we're going to go with the uh, doing the muskets. So bear with me a second. Here's me saying everything's really viscous and it flows flows out the out the bottle really easy, and this one's deciding to be a bit awkward. Any dark brown will do for the, just as it will do for 28s, 15s, whatever, any dark brown will do uh, for the base of a, of a musket. Uh, mainly because I like to put a, usually put a touch of black in there as well. And then build it up with other colours so, um, you know, it's, uh, it's going to have its colour change slightly. So any, any darkish brown will do. You often find sometimes that the brown won't cover, even on a grey. And that touch of black just helps it and gives you that deeper base, deeper crevices. Right. It doesn't matter if you go over the where you're going to put metallics on these guys. And I thought as well, I mean probably they did have black musket slings as well. Um, when I was looking at a, I believe a North Carolina reenactment unit, I'm not 100% sure, I've, I've looked at that many recently, uh, I was surprised that a lot of the musket slings were actually brown and not black. I always thought Union musket slings were, were black, and in which cases they they obviously had a lot of uh, a lot of captured stuff. I thought they would have had black, but oh, well, you learn something new every day. As I say, with these guys, you're not, you know, you, you might not get your your artistic kick in painting as you would do a 28mm, I understand that. Uh, and never actually, although I've got two complete League of Augsburg armies now, <laughs> somebody who still hasn't wargamed them, I've never actually wargamed 10 mils, I don't think. Um, but, uh, you know, if you've got a sh you know, small table area, or if you've got a large table area, you know, that they give that bit of extra, maybe uniform colour than a 6mm. Um, and they're fairly forgiving, you can leave the odd mould line on. Uh, especially, uh, that is, what the, I'd say the cleaning process, uh, you know, use a, one of these like, you know, rat tail, one of these little skinny round files, um, which are great just for putting between the legs. Just give them a couple of twirls and it will normally clean off the, the mould lines. One thing I was thinking about the other day as well is 
I mean, they do it with Napoleonics, well, any, any type of figure. Why is it figure manufacturers always put bayonets on on their uh, on their figures? Because whenever you hear reenactors talk and people in the know, they always say that in the states, anyway, in the in, you know the Civil War, particularly, it was very rare that uh, they actually went in with a bayonet. Um, it was used for more like putting hunks of meat over the fire or something than uh, and opening tins. In yet every manufacturer you always see, they always put a bayonet on a on a figure. Same in Napoleonics. As I say, I'm going right over the, because I want to include the sling in these, I'm going right over the musket. It doesn't matter on this scale if you're going to go over the, 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 the musket barrel, you know, the metal areas. I mean, I'll often do that on a 28 as well, sometimes, because you often have those deep channels where they've sculpted them and cast them, where the musket barrel's in, where the, metals, where the wooden stock would be. And uh, I tend to find that if you've got a dark brown colour such as this, it'll go right into those crevices. So when you do apply your metallics and then, because the next stage I'll always do on a musket is base coat wood first and then go uh, hit it with a metallic for the any metal parts and then do a first highlight on the, the wood itself. If you've got any spare brown, which I haven't, uh, you'd obviously, I often do these bases, as I say, with some form of brown paint. Uh, it's just so that it's, when you put them on your your base, it's a lot easier to work around, you know, than having a glaring piece of grey showing through. Uh, so that's our base on those. I think we will go, where are we? Let's put that in shot for a second. We will go with metallic. I have got some metallic mixed up already. I'm just hoping from last night, I'm just hoping I can use it. We may be in luck with a bit of water added. You watch, I'll run out when I, I'll run out when I, I actually uh, get to the last musket and have to do a complete new mix. Here we go, let's give them a go. Let's see. Where are we? Here we all go. Sorry guys, I was just trying to focus my eyes there. Here's, here's me telling you 10 mils are easy to paint. And they are, it's just, uh, as I say, I'm working uh, with my camera robbing me of some of the light. That'll do for me. Again, if you can remember, get a get a separate jar for your metallics, for your water. Just, it'll just stop any metallic flecks going in your cleaning water. As you wash your brush out, and then uh, I'll guarantee you, you get little flecks at some stage in your paint. And it only ever has to happen once, and that wrecks a figure. You got to start again. So in that, Gavin only went and put it in. His He's got three water jars and he went and put it in the in the wrong one. Uh, are we for battery power? Doing all right. I was looking on what to, what base sizes to put these on. I'd actually fancied putting them. Well, I mean, this is me all over putting them on one bit, one base just to have that mass effect but uh, I'll probably end up putting them on 30 mil squares like my other League of Augsburgs and then you've got uh, a chance to turn different wings of the regiment round to 
face oblique and all that type of stuff. I have enough metallics anyway to just keep trying to wipe off water from the ferrule. That's one thing you should always check for is uh, water on your metal ferrule of your brush. Especially with metallics because you'll end up with a great big teardrop of water going all over your figure, especially at 10mm, <laughs> covered in nice little sparkly bits. brush really has seen better days, it hasn't got much left in it. It's just a bit annoying. I was hoping to do my uh, my Starfighter this week. I've just got to paint it now, but uh, and stick a couple of bits of clear parts on and that. But um, it's that hot and humid. I just thought no, leave it a few days for the the weather to change. Hopefully, if it doesn't, then I'll get dug in on that. I've actually got a finally got a, a unit of AB cavalry complete. Obviously not base because the client does that himself, but uh, I'll be showing a video of those along with some Italian infantry uh, in a couple of days' time, hopefully. Right, we've got the metallics on that. We'll go with one of Gav's favourite colours, which is uh, Cav Brown. That's great. It's great for if you want to. Do a base for red hair, not so much on on twenty eights. It's a bit it's a bit too dark, but on fifteen, well, you know, fifteen stroke eighteen on tens, it's a good base for that. Um, but again, I use it mainly uh, as a colour on muskets at fifteen, eighteen, and ten, ten mil. It's it's obviously artistic. They, you know, they were never like that, but at that scale. They show up quite well. Right now, I'm going to one of my favourite brushes, which is my Army Painter uh, Insane Detail. Can't believe it's red hot and sunny outside, and yet, and I've got a decent painting lamp, but I can hardly bloom and see anything because it's, uh, as I say, the, the camera's obstructing it. I haven't tried to do any banding on the musket barrels. I can't even remember how many they had on, on these guys. Uh, and again, I'm doing the one face of the musket first. Whichever uh, whichever's pointing face first. Try and leave some of the dark brown showing through. Again, it just picks up the figure a bit. I mean, 10 mils are all about highlights. Um, you, it, it's a fine line to walk because you don't want to completely change uh, you know as I say there's no point if if, if these confederates have got butternut on and there's no point painting them pink you know it's um, but at the same time you will have to teach yourself how to abandon what, what you're thinking about on your, your 28mm figures say uh, and just have a t slightly different mindset for for the tens, because it is all about your your highlight placement. So as I say, your butternuts. You know, you could be using. You know, uh, well, I think I use dark sand as the the final highlight on those butternuts, which I was quite happy with. Um, and so you just have to suspend, well, the toy soldiers at the end of the day, you have to <laughs> suspend belief a bit. But, uh, you know, you just have to, to suspend belief a bit. Uh, 
I mean, you can paint them really natural, like a, like I did that Zouave, but I just I don't know. I just I, I just think personally, uh, ten mils are lifted by um, by the highlights you put on them. And you don't have to go completely to town on on the highlights. Uh, the as you'll see in a minute, the the cross belts or the black leather work, I tend not to highlight um, because I like it quite stark, standing out from the from the figure uh, because they are black, and I'd have probably done the same if they were, you know, a whitish colour. In fact, I do for the for the water canteens. I just normally leave them a a brighter colour. We'll count, as I forgot those other guys, we'll do the, the last highlight I'm going to do on the muskets. Because um, when the video's over, I'll, uh, I'll go back to them. Alright, in fact, I'm actually going to change the battery now, as it's now telling me to change it before it stops. So uh, I'm going to change the battery, and we'll be back in a moment. Right guys, I've uh, done a couple of bits off camera only because I've only got one battery left. I've only got the two batteries and they seem to, obviously the, the more I waffle, <laughs> the quicker they get used up. Uh, and they take about an hour and a half to recharge, so um, it takes, as I say, it can take ages to get these videos done. So I've done the black cross belts and the cartridge belts off camera, black boots. Now some of the other guys on the in the unit, I'd actually put some brown boots in as well. I, just as an experiment really to see if once they've had static grass over them if I could actually see the boots <laughs> uh, if that's the case I'll, I'll carry on mixing them up because obviously they had brown boots and black boots uh, I've also done the very top see the highlights on the muskets they've had that done to them as well uh, to uh, and, and again it's, it's all about highlight placement and how bright you do them uh, that was Parasite Brown as a highlight on those muskets. It's a ga uh, Vallejo game colour. Uh, you could get away with the red leather from uh, Vallejo model colour. It's just a bit more subtle uh, and it, it, it might well work on a 28 but not so much on a, on a uh, 15 or a, or a 10 mil. Uh, bear with me one moment. I'm just trying to pick out some colours. I think we'll go with a... We'll try a yellow, yellow ochre. I'll put a cup on the palette at the same time. Uh, this is for the doing the button up. Um, I'm vastly running out of area to actually put paint. I've got I've used up this whole uh, this whole wet palette at the moment. Uh, so we'll get some yellow ochre on. And. Uh, I'm thinking maybe old wood from the Panzer Aces. And what I'll do is just put that around the different jackets and trousers. Again, you're mixing it up very slightly. It doesn't look a lot, but uh, it, it might, when the unit's all put together, it'll just give it that extra ad hocness. Again, you, you know, if you're doing thousands of these, you might decide to do it, you know, a lot, you know. Hang on a second. If we've got our dodgy camera moving about again, yeah, you might decide to, you know, skip different parts of this uh, this highlighting because this is more of a, a tutorial for highlighting the figures more than anything. This might be a bit dark actually. I don't think it's going to show up. We're not after too subtle here. We'll see. We'll put it on this, uh, all over this one figure first and see what he looks like. Again, you're not even necessarily following the, the, the sculptor has put, you know, creases in the, the jacket and trousers, but you're, you drive yourself crazy trying to, trying to, you know, get on the edge of each crease. Again, I, I use the dot and dash effect on these type of figures. I've done a good job on the boot there. I haven't even uh, covered it. Oh, yeah, well, the other one can wait for a minute. 
So this is all the old wood we're putting on at the moment. As I say, I think it's going to be just a tad too too dark, especially when it dries out. My poor dog, he was quite. Uh, I put the fan back on as I uh, as I painted these off camera, and as soon as he heard it, he came charging in and plopped himself down in front of it. And he's most disconcerted that I've uh, I've turned it off to do the video. Well, let's see what this yellow ochre looks like. That's not too bad. If you've got a like there a mould line that I've missed or not cleaned very well, um, you can often get away with them by obviously placing your highlights along the top of the mould line and making it into an artificial highlight if that makes sense. And that works a bit better for me. This is what I mean, you've got to be you've got to be slightly bolder. We're getting shot eventually. You've got to be slightly bolder with your highlights here. I think if you can uh, go up and down the scales, if at all possible, you know, put some practice in. Even if you say do a you know a couple of units of, of 10 mils, it might not be your bag. You know, you might say no. I'm not really interested, but it will help you get a feel for where to place highlights and what and and what paint mixes are good and and for for different bits and pieces. And you know you can always sell the ten mils on afterwards, but I do think it helps if you were uh, if you paint different figure scales. Yeah, and a lot of people don't have the time if they if they start painting ten mils that they don't really want to keep. I understand that, you know, it's uh, you know, you've got limited time. As I say, under the camera, it's like, oh my life, that's a bit uh, neon light moment, but um, it does. It does work, I think so anyway. When it's uh, it, it it works for the League of Augsburg. Yes, that's a you know different types of uniforms, but um, I believe it it works. So what I think I'll do is once I've uh, once I've got these varnished, the whole unit. I mean, because those other figures aren't varnished yet, obviously. I'll uh, I'll base them, and uh, we'll use that as our final. And then then I'll put the video up. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, they'll they'll charge you around. I think Pendragon charge you roughly around a fiver with a VAT, so with a tax. Um, I don't know how cheap ten mils are really. I suppose. I think it's not so much, you know, or you can get all, you know, <laughs> you know. You look at me. I've got this whole pile of figures for X amount of pounds. I think it's more that if you really want to obviously use them. I mean, they. They're great for looking down. I mean, I'll often get my League of Augsburg figures out, and uh, you know, you've got them all arrayed, and they look they look cracking armies. I think what we'll do again is uh, I'll get that dark sand out again. 
If I get the dark sand out, that will be our final highlight on them. So you don't have to go overboard. Um, you can do one highlight, you can do two, you know, two or three, depending on whatever you want to do. Um, the only thing I'd suggest, as I say, I, I know guys can, can wash them quite successfully. Uh, but I do think it, for me anyway, it, it, it muddies them up a bit too much. Whereas if you're doing bright, bold highlights, uh, it, it tends to lift the figure. Now this highlight is this dark sand, and you wouldn't think about putting that as a highlight on a on a larger scale figure when you've got such dark contrast, but um, dark shadows. But as I say, when you when you're doing these type of highlights, you just end up thinking out the box a bit. Something which I'm never very good at. I use this dark sand as well for the blanket rolls a lot of the time. So there's nothing massively hard on any on any of these. Uh, they, even the faces, you're only doing one highlight, and if you're using this like you know this this type of really thin brush, you're literally again it's the dot method. You're literally painting a putting a dot on each cheek, and even I, I must admit the cheek, often the cheek that's nearest the musket, I tend not to do because it, it's you know it's in shadow. Um, you ain't going to see it when it's. Uh, when they're on the tabletop, so um, I tend to just leave the base coat on that side and just. But again, if you can highlight the jacket edges a lot of the time and, and cuff edges, um, it will bring the figure out. might have to touch up the boots in places where I've scuffed the paint. Um, I must say I'm quite... Uh, I didn't know how these would look because the League of Augsburg figures have got you know they're, they're reds and things things like that. But when you're when you're doing more, it's almost like doing World War Two figures or Great War figures. It's how far you can lift them up. And again, when you do a close up photograph of them, they probably won't look you know particularly nice. Um, you're relying on the fact more that uh, they look better from a distance. It'd be interesting. I'd like to see how I'd paint. Um, I've got some Union figures in the box, and uh, I'd be interested to see how I do the Union blue because it goes against everything. <laughs> I mean, I was going saying, you know, about that Zwarov Wheats, Wheats Tiger uh, uniform, about the, the jacket being dark and, and whatever, and it goes against everything that I uh, that I like by by lightening these guys up, as in the darker colours. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, that looks. We shall hold our breath. Um, we need to do the. I was about to start work on the on the jackets, but uh, sorry, on the the bed uh, the blanket rolls, but we haven't done the greys yet. So again, the paint's flying out today out the bottles because it's blooming so warm and muggy. Um, Right, still going to use this 
still going to use this uh, thinner brush now as we're doing highlights. Um, this is a medium grey I'm using. If you could see. And then our, uh, our other highlight's going to be sky grey. Again, it's another go-to colour. It's really good in your armoury. As I say, it's, it's a good base for doing whites on larger figures. You know, I'm about to say 28 mils. Um, and I found, as I say, for 10 mils, it's it's a uh, it's a really good highlight colour as well. Just put a bit of black on there. I just noticed. Put musket metallic all over it, which isn't good. And a bit of black on this cartridge as well. I'll see down it. I've still got those those light blue trousers to highlight as well. I'm wondering if I can get away with using a grey on those. I'll just quickly put a grey on this uh, frock coat. Right, let's see what it looks like with a, a grey on it. It's probably going to be too dark. Yeah, I think that's going to be too dark. But we'll see. It's on there now, so... Get this guy's arm as well. This frock coat figure. He's, uh, I've got another one of his mates on uh, on the unit already painted. Let's see. I'll just notice a strap I haven't done because he's got a backpack on. See when you're not used to a particular colour. I should say. Uh, Uniform equipment, whatever. I might use a bit of this grey as I've got a ton of it now. Uh, I might use a bit as a couple of blankets. Just run that paint off. Problem when you're using these very fine brushes, you have to keep them hydrated. Keep the uh, paint from going dry. I said to you guys try not to replicate your paint too much you know if you've got grey try and mix the greys up and that but sometimes on these 10 mils you're not doing the amount of highlights um, so you've, you know you're trying to keep them fairly simple so there are times when you have to break that rule and uh, rules are always good broken when it's convenient for you <laughs> I think, as I say, because this uh, this unit's going to be, oh, sorry, this this lolly stick's going to be mixed in with the others. I 
can't believe how bad the uh, my lighting goes when once that camera's underneath. It really does uh, really throw it out. I've got the other one on as well. Right. So we've got two grey blankets. We'll use this uh, this dark sand, especially on our grey guy here. Sorry guys, it's trying to it's, you're trying to not scuff the figures up with your your hands. So he's our grey guy, he's our grey guy, so we'll go nice mould line there, but it is what it is. Wouldn't want that on a 28 or a 15, but sometimes you can get away with it on these guys. See, I try not to, as he's got this, this end figure here, he's got a brown hat, button-up jacket. I was going to put him a brown a brown blanket, but I just think that's a bit too much, so I think we're going to go with our old friend uh, Sandy. I'm going to have one jacket that's, uh, one blanket that's plain, and another couple that have just got a couple of patterns on them, or different colours anyway. And of course I've done this where I've got a little bit of overspill black. I'm trying to get light sand to over, over paint black. Doesn't normally work. Right, so that's our base of our blankets. Um, we need our old pal Sky Grey. There's a couple of things I might have to do off camera, uh, which uh, when I knock, you know, when I finish this this off, um, I might do the the water canteen strap, which is just usually pure white or some pale sand or some some something light anyway. Uh, Gonna use our sky grey as a highlight. If we can see any of it, there we go. And the canteen strap, it's not so much um it's hard to do with a camera, it's just I'm just trying to conserve enough battery to work with. Edge of the cappy. We'll use this as a highlight on the on the sky blue trousers as well. On top of that grey, which wasn't very successful, but it's on now, so. A lesson learnt for the next time I do uh, another reb, another reb unit, or the union for that matter, so they've got a lot of that type of colour. I 
think once we've done these these grey trousers we'll uh, have a go on the uh, blankets highlights for those and then that really just leaves us our flesh and as I say that I'll probably do it off camera um, just the this little strap that goes on the canteens and um, just highlighting I should put a bit of highlight around the black of the, the cartridge box and the guy that's got the haversack we'll use this uh, on the grey, but two grey blankets we're also going to use this as a highlight, this sky, sky grey to get uh, brown all over that. I did put, think of putting some cuff. Uh, I think I might try on the next unit when I'm not on camera. I might just put a couple of cuff colours and collar colours um, on these guys as well. Although again at this scale it's probably a bit overkill but again it just all adds to the it all adds to the unit. Right, I think that's the greys that we can, uh, as I say, it's just all about bold bold highlights and where to place them really. Um, bear with me one moment, let's see what we've got, pale sand, do us. Use that as a highlight for our blankets, and then we'll. I've got a bit of red and that uh, cav brown, maybe. Again, obviously, in real time, the, the jackets were never going to be. Um, sorry, the, the blankets and whatever were never going to be that bright, but. This is a decent highlight for dark sand, pale sand. I normally give it a mix. I'd do a 50 50 if it was on a larger figure. So, because I haven't, this has gone a bit chalky. Use this calf brown, I think. I'm trying to <laughs> see anything at all. You can do dots, um, even the squares. You know, I'm not trying to get them square, square. There's, it's enough for it to look like there's a bit of a, a pattern going on. Yes, of course it won't have any type of scrutiny under a camera but it's again you're just doing get that in there you're just showing what you know because at the end of the day most of us most of us that are into military history say you'll know that obviously the Confederates often had blankets wrapped around them and that they were often homespun blankets with different different patterns on so that tells you straight away you know you don't you know that that's what that's representing 
fair enough if you have no idea then you're thinking what the hell has he done <laughs> what's that but uh, so again all we're doing here is rough they're not real squares obviously but they're, they're roughly like it just gives us a bit of a gives us a bit of a like a checker pattern uh, we won't be highlighting that up anymore um, let's see if we can find a different colour uh, the red's a bit bright there that I've got we'll try this orange brown on this grey guy here I don't want it to look like it does at the moment like polka dots um, so we'll put some lines in there in a minute hopefully A lot of them like obviously homespun embroidered embroidered stuff, you know, uh, that the wives, mothers, and whatever would do. So again, it bears absolutely no scrutiny whatsoever. <laughs> only, uh, only in your mind's eye. Big lump of paint on there. Right, I'm going to get onto our faces um, because my battery is, low, is running low and I don't intend, I'm oh, sorry guys, but I don't intend to charge them both up for another, another uh, session on this. It's, uh, it's a bit much. As I say, I think next, I just wanted to show, uh, you know, the, what you can, what you could do uh, with with the different highlights, as I say, well, if we do a League of Augsburg or maybe a separate figure or a mounted figure in the future, I'll just do one and we'll get a bit more. If you can get more depth with it than I've already done with a with a ten mil, but it was just trying to show a collection of different colours, really. Right, I'm using flat fre flat flesh here. Uh, you know, you could get away with um, you know the sunny skin tone, whatever, whatever floats your boat. All right, so I'm trying to get on the nose, on the chin, and on the uh, cheekbones. So nose, chin, cheekbones, dot dot dot. Uh, on the hands you're just doing a raised edge so wherever the if it's like a, a fist that's clenched as he's marching like this guy I'm about to do then where are we can we see just about then it's two little dots now this guy's got his his musket where are we Got his musket quite close to, to him, so again, nose. There's too much paint on this bristle actually. Uh, we'll leave the other side. Again, it's not cutting corners, it's it's more the fact that um, you aren't going to see it because it's in the deep shadows here. Again, where his hands, it's a bit awkward that one where they've moulded it, but uh, where his hand is. So that's his face compared to his guy in the grey next to him. That's all you need. Uh, you know, a lighter skin colour. I mean, you could even use white if you want it. You know, you could have a really dark, as I say, the shadow shadow flesh with some type of white or really pale colour. Uh, but I tried these on the unit yet last night, the night before, and it, it seemed to work for me, so... I think on my League of Oldsburgs, obviously it's a fairly large, I've done both sides, fairly large army and I've had two or three different, you know, practices at different uh, shadows and, and highlights. I 
sorry, I keep getting out of shot. Uh, I won't put... I was going to say I won't put any photographs, so of course I'm going to when I do the actual base unit. Um, I've got a colour bearer as well in that lot, so... I'll have to cut down. I've got some wire pikes for the for the League of Augsburgs. I'll just have to uh, either use it, you know, cut down a, a pike and stick that on as well. Now the the fist just comes into shot on these back ones uh, as he's marching back. So we'll put a little highlight there. Again, it does. It, it seems quite innocuous, you know, just putting a, a highlight there, but. holding breath for two seconds but again it's another highlight placement uh, that uh, that draws the eye uh, so if you think about it let's turn them around again have one last look I will be highlighting the hats as well but I just think um, I don't think I've got any colours that I'm happy oh I have oh, I might use uh, anyway um, yeah, so it's highlight placement, so let's just try this colour out on the hat, which is a flesh, which again I, I normally say try not to use. Now that might be too much. Um, yeah, that's a bit much, but I'll use it as an example. Right, well. So what you're trying to achieve, you've got the highlight on the hat, you've got a couple of highlights on the jacket, there's a pronounced crease there, or just make one up yourself, highlight, highlight on the cuff, highlight on the, the base of the trousers, uh, it's too small to bother with a highlight on the boot, um, then you turn your figure round, I'm just trying to get this same one into shot, uh, what I am, I am going to do in a minute is put some sky grey on these uh, water canteens so they'll be, and let's just do it now while I'm saying it so you can get the idea. Highlight on the leading edge of the water canteen. There's a highlight on the, only slightly, but there's a highlight on the hand going back. And I haven't got the colour for the, for the, uh, can, uh, for the cartridge box, but there'll be highlights on the cartridge box. Highlight on the uh, on the rear leg at the base again. Highlight again. I've done a few there, but you know, there's, I can pick out at least one on the co collar, one towards the elbow joint, cuff, I should say, one on the elbow joint, elbow joint, and on the top of the musket again. Highlight uh, to also to the base of the musket on the on the musket butt as well. So. You've got all your normal, co well, the colours that you've put down, but those particular points are literally defining the figure, if that makes sense. They're literally like, um, you know, like the kids uh, join the dots, uh, and it you know, obviously reveals what it, what it is once you've drawn your little lines from, you know, dot one to dot two, all that type of thing. It's the same here. So you've got, you know, highlight on the high point here sticking out, Highlight, you know, on the on the butt. Highlight, arms. Highlight. Uh, there's a, the the jacket itself. There's a highlight on the very edge because it, it stands out. Uh, and it doesn't matter what colour that is. You know, obviously the grey guy's got the got the same. Uh, the it's a bit more subtle on the light blue trousers. Um, I'm not massively happy with that, but as I say, it's a learning curve, so I know what to do on some of the some of the others. Uh, don't bother highlighting the the blanket rolls as such, although you could throw a couple of uh, whites in there if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, just think once you've strong highlights, but think of those final placing of those highlights. It, it's not so much that you're trying to define a jacket or define the trousers, you know, the backpack, whatever. You're actually on ten mils, in my opinion you're trying to define the actual figure itself. 
by where you place your little dots of, of bright highlights if that makes any sense whatsoever so guys thank you very much for joining me on these tutorials of uh, 10 millimeter American Civil War uh, I will before you get to see this video you'll see at the end or at the beginning as I only put the thumbnail photograph up there will be a photograph of uh, the completed based uh, based unit so I hope that's been of some help to you on on you know where you where you're putting your highlights on your 10 mil figures to actually uh, make them stand out and to obviously go against the grain a bit on how bright you will be highlighting them uh, but uh, it does work honestly uh, once they're especially once they're all based so guys thank you very much I'll put the white on the canteen straps on these I will highlight the hats to finish them off and then just go over and any little shiny dings of metal that I've rubbed out or um, paint I've rubbed off you know that type of thing I'll just you know tidy those up so guys thank you very much you take care of yourselves and the next tutorial coming up will be a 28 millimeter Napoleonic uh, French line drummer. So I'll see you for that one. Cheers.